morning I'll have you turn for the text, the passage of scripture that I recited part of it during my prayer, Luke chapter 2, the angelic announcement to the shepherds. What was the angelic, the angel's announcement to the shepherds? Well, you can read it in Luke chapter 2, beginning in the 8th verse. We're just going to read verses 8 through 11. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. And that again is our theme for the Advent candle today. I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. But today I want to preach a message about joy. Um, I have to admit as I get ready to preach this message, I don't feel a lot of joy right now. You'll say, well, why not? Aren't you always supposed to be joyful? Well, there are things that can enter into our lives. They, they say that there's a big difference between joy and happiness. Happiness has to do with happenings. But joy has to do with kind of an inner feeling that either things are all right or in the future things are going to be all right. I have a definition somewhere in my Bible that I wrote down from uh, uh, Webster's. It says, joy is the emotion evoked by either well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. And so it can either be immediate or it can be future. And I think that for all of us, there is this kind of feeling of future joy. If we don't have present joy, people might ask me, well, why aren't you so joyous right now? Well, I could start giving you a bunch of my reasons. Tomorrow marks two years since my younger brother went home to be with the Lord. I miss him. And I think that for most people, when you get to the Christmas season, what may be the most difficult is that around the tree there's more empty spaces every year. Sometimes it's immediate family. Sometimes it may be people that, you know, like I mentioned earlier, Miss Sandra Nemeth. Um, she told me recently when I visited her up in the hospital, she says, you're like a son to me. And I said, well, I appreciate that. I feel honored that you feel that way about me. And um, she was somebody that I grew close to. I could give her a call and we could talk about stuff that was going on and sometimes I might be on the phone with her for an hour. And um, I, I, I enjoyed Miss Sandra. But I'm going to miss her. And I hate to say this about our congregation because I'm not trying to spook anybody. I've got an old congregation. <laughs> they ain't getting any younger. And I maybe shouldn't even think this way. But I find myself when I climb into the pulpit, I wonder next Christmas at this time, which faces I'm looking at today won't be here next year at this time. The older I get, the more it seems I, I know. People say, man, Pastor Tim, you're, you're depressing us. I, I, I'm just trying to give you an explanation of why I don't feel a real sense of, of joy and happiness because as these people leave, there's an emptiness in my heart. Whether or not I show it, I like you people. In fact, I love you people. And when you're gone, I'm going to miss you. And it could be me. You know, I've got no guarantees. The Lord could end up saying, hey, Pastor Tim, you've afflicted those people long enough. Give them a break. Come on up. I'm like, okay. I can't argue. But Joy is one of those things that people will sometimes say, well, your joy can never be taken away. Well, there's a passage of scripture. 
I think it's over in John chapter 16. Um, and I'll kind of point this out to you. John chapter 16. Jesus has been telling his disciples that he's going to be leaving them soon. He's going to be here for a while and then he's going to leave for, for a while. And Jesus says in verse 20, chapter, John chapter 16, verse 20, I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child is pain because her time has come, but when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. That's what I'm looking for. It's not a momentary joy. I'm looking for a lasting joy. And quite honestly, even though I don't feel joyous, you know, and I know that one of the things that we read from out of this, it doesn't say um, the, the passage of Scripture comes from the book of Philippians, but it says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, Miss Bessie paraphrased it. She did a different translation. Rejoice means to be filled with joy. I'm telling you, be filled with joy. So, having said all that, people say, well, what's your point? If you're not feeling joyous, there is something that you can find lasting joy in. And it is in Jesus Christ. Um, this morning, I want you to think about the passage of Scripture that I read from Luke chapter 2 where the angel says, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The good tidings of great joy is that you have a Savior. What is a Savior? I know that oftentimes we think about the Savior as like the woman laying on the railroad tracks, all tied up with rope. And some guy comes along and rescues her just before the train would have run her over. You know, somebody comes along in a split second and rescues us from certain death. Even as I talked with the kids last Thursday night at the uh, after-school program, Jesus is out on a boat with the disciples and he's wanting them to go across the lake and he's laid down in the bottom of the boat to sleep and while they're out there, a big storm comes along and they're about ready to drown. The, the ship is getting ready to sink and the disciples get all panicky and they're kind of like, Jesus, Jesus, save us, save us. Jesus wakes up from the nap and says, okay, I can take care of it. And so there in the boat, he looks at the wind and the sea and he says, hey, chill. And it says instantly the storm. That's oftentimes what we're looking at is that when we have a Savior, we expect God to always send somebody to quiet the storms. But I want to tell you as a pastor... He may not always quiet the storm. Sometimes the storm overwhelms you. People say, well, that's, that's a contradiction. No, here's what I want you to focus on when you need to understand the joy of knowing Jesus is that when you're in the storm, Jesus is there. Well, Jesus, if, you, if you're going to be here, it's, it's not enough just to, to be here. I, I want you to do something. And I'm not trying to, um, I don't know, mislead you from the pulpit this morning, but I want to tell you, sooner or later, a storm's going to come into your life, but the storm's going to get you. Are you prepared to accept that? I'm not trying to take your joy away, but I'm trying to tell you from Scripture, when it talks about a Savior, it's talking about somebody that when you go through that tough time, it doesn't mean that 
God is always going to come and stop the storm. Two years ago, come tomorrow. 18th of December, two years ago, the storm got my younger brother. I have people praying all over the place. So many of you people were praying. I had people praying in other states. During that time that my, my, when my brother was going through this, I had over 30 people that I was texting later on when my mom and my dad were in the hospital. I had 66 different people that I was texting all the time about that. God took my younger brother. Three months later, he took my mom. Thankfully, he spared my dad. But I wanted to tell you that the, the, the joy comes from not all the time getting what you're asking for. The joy comes from knowing that when you're going through the storm, there's somebody there that's with you. And if the storm happens to get you, he's got you in, you, in his hands. I told you folks before about my younger brother. This past week on the 14th, marked the last time I talked with my brother two years ago. I was sitting at home. My brother's condition, he had COVID, was continuing to get worse. And we got the news for the text message that the doctors had decided that the mask that he'd been wearing was not providing enough oxygen for him and that he would have to be put on the ventilator. And before they put him on the ventilator, the doctor came to him and said, we strongly advise you to call your family and say goodbye because we don't expect you're gonna make it. And there I was sitting at home knowing that my little brother was facing being put on a ventilator, that this storm was raging all around him. You know, I was fervently crying out to God, Lord, please don't take my little brother. I always kind of felt like a protector for my little brother. If there was anything I could do to save my little brother, I'd have done it gladly. I didn't want to see the storm get my little brother. My little brother called me up. Right before he called me, he made the same call to my parents. I got the phone call and his son, who was by his side, was the one that initially was on the phone and he says I said hey Joel that's his son's name Joel we've got your dad in prayer and he says yeah I'm here with my dad right now and I says well we're praying that the Lord is going to help him to get better we got a lot of people praying and all we can do is just trust the Lord's going to help him to get through this and that's when Joel my nephew stopped me and he says well that's why we're calling because the doctor's told him they don't expect him to make it. And I've got my dad sitting here next to me and he just wants to say goodbye. And my little brother through, you know, doing the best he can just to breathe says, hey, I just called to say I love you. I miss you. I was on the phone with him once in 30 seconds he said I can't talk long because I still got to call my other brother I got to call my sister I said I understand before he hung up and I said hey, you know you're the best little brother a guy could ever have I love you and by the grace of God I'll see you on the other side You see the tears in my eyes now. I mean, it still hurts. Some of you folks have had a similar experience. But here's what I want to tell, what I want to tell you about that experience. The joy came from knowing Jesus. My mom and dad, my dad said more than one time, what really stood out to him about talking to my younger brother, and I, I can vouch for it. My dad said that what really stood out to him the most was that there was no fear in my brother's voice. He knew that Jesus was with him. And I guess that's where I want to go with the message today. 
Do you know the joy that comes from knowing that Jesus is with you? I want to tell you as your pastor, and I'm not saying this to be a downer, sooner or later a storm's going to get you. You don't need a savior. You don't need a savior that's always going to rescue you from the storm. That's not the savior that the word of God promises. The savior that the word of God promises is that when the storm does finally get you, that the savior still has you. I still think about my brother's funeral that we weren't able to go to. COVID was still raging at the time my mom was battling through um, some lymphoma that she'd had for four and a half years. We felt like it would have been too risky, so that, that was kind of a heartache for our mom that she wasn't able to attend her youngest son's funeral. But she understood the risks and she didn't want to take the risk. Oddly enough, oddly enough, we decided not to make the trip. We met together as a family and watched it on a closed circuit television over to church in East Springfield, where my older brother goes to church. And my sister, unknowingly, who works at a doctor's office, met us over there and we all watched the video together, little knowing that my sister had COVID at the time. And my mom and my dad and myself got COVID probably from her. And she's aware of that. She doesn't need to feel guilty. She was just doing her job. But I can just tell you that storms are going to come in your life. And there are going to be things that happen in your life that are going to take away your happiness. There are going to be disappointments. There are going to be times when your heart is broken. The joy that you really need is to know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. My brother knew that Jesus had saved him and we knew it as well. My younger brother at a young age had asked Jesus to come in his heart and he gave his heart to Jesus because he believed the Christmas message that God so loved this world that God gave us a savior not somebody that's all the time going to storm stop all the storms of our life but somebody that if the storm gets us and eventually it will the Savior will have us in his care. And I preach a message this morning. I, I, I don't know who all is saved here and who isn't saved. But you know in your heart whether or not you've ever asked Jesus to save you. Do you not understand that that's what Christmas is about? God saying, he loves you so much that he sent somebody that you can believe in that that person you're believing in is never going to let you out of his care. Even if a storm gets you, you'll still be belonging to him. My greatest desire at Christmas time is that people might come to know the joy that comes from knowing Jesus to know that Jesus came to save you. And if you place your faith and trust in him, he'll accept you. He won't ever refuse anybody. He'll say, I forgive you of all your sins. And when that time comes for you, and I don't know when that could be, my time could come before the end of the day. But when it comes, you will be right with God because you trusted Jesus. I just want to ask this morning, this Christmas, can you honestly say, Jesus is my Savior? <coughs>
because I have trusted him. And if you can't say that, can I ask you honestly, why don't you want to trust him? You'll never find anybody that loves you more than Jesus. Jesus came not just to live here, but he came knowing he was going to have to die on a cross. Because he knew that every person would eventually have to give an account for their sins. That person would either have to die for their sins, or Jesus said, I will die in your place if you let me. You'll never find anybody else in all the world that would be willing to do that. And I would encourage you this Christmas to ask Jesus to be your Savior. Ask Him to come in your heart, forgive you of your sins, and save you. That when your time comes, you'll go to heaven. You could do that today. You could end up saying, Lord Jesus, today I ask you in my heart, and Jesus will save you. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you for the opportunity to preach this morning, and I just pray that you will use the words that I've spoken to speak to people's hearts whether here in this building or even on YouTube. Father Christmas, I think, is the greatest holiday that we celebrate. I know that some people say, well, it's Easter. And I, I don't want to get into debate. I just say with regard to Christmas, we couldn't have an Easter if there hadn't been a Christmas. <coughs> Father, we thank you that you gave us your son to save us. And the main thing that Jesus came to save us from was our sins. The wages of our sins is death to be rejected by you, God, rightfully rejected because of our sins. And Jesus said, I want to forgive their sins, Father. I want to take all of their sins on myself, and I want to make them holy and acceptable in your sight. And Father, we thank you that you've given us hope through a Savior. And I pray, Father, that this Christmas might be joyous for all of us in knowing that our sins are taken care of. We don't need to fear death or the grave because we have somebody who has saved us. I pray that as we have an opportunity to sing an invitation hymn this morning, if there are decisions that we need to make, help us to make those during this time of invitation. For Jesus' sake, in his name we pray.
really accept him here at the church. You can accept him any time. Just bow your head and ask him to come into your heart. Give him your heart, and he'll save you. Thank you for being in the Lord's house this morning. If you're able to make it back this evening, we welcome you tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll begin on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Are all hearts and minds clear? Thank you for being here. Let's have a closing word of prayer. Brother Kevin, would you leave us in a closing prayer? I appreciate it. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this season. It was all about you and what you did for us. Lord, I can leave this to the safe passage and